Hello. You know how it goes when you have a lathe and you think, I need a bigger lathe. Hi, my name is Kevin Toppenberg. I'd like to share with you my uh, purchase and restoration of a, a South Bend lathe. Uh, I got this lathe uh, a couple years ago. It's about a 1935 uh, Craftsman Atlas lathe. And it's been a good starter lathe, but doesn't have a lot of rigidity. So I've decided to try to upgrade to something bigger. Let me show you. If you can see on that micrometer there, I've got it set to zero. Here I'm pressing with my hands. I get about 5,000, 5 thousandths or 6 thousandths deflection just with my hands pushing. Uh, in the world of lays, that's not good. It's got old Babbitt bearings. Uh, I've tried tightening them up. I've done various things. You know, it might be able to improve a little bit more, but I still would like something with more rigidity. There's also issues with this flexing at times, and the whole thing just is uh, difficult to do um, things such as single point threading. So that's why I want to get something bigger. Right now, it's all in pieces on my floor, but there's a story about how I got here. So let me back up a little bit and uh, catch you all up and we'll see how this goes. Now, my mother always told me there were certain places on the internet that you shouldn't go, but I didn't listen, and I'm gonna show you the worst site of all. It's called Bid Spotter. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> no, seriously. Um, in looking for my lathe, you know, you come on here and it like, wow, that looks great. It's only asking $5 for a huge lathe. That ought to be wonderful. <laughs> um, of course, that's not what you're going to pay. Uh, let me show you what I found. So I found this South Bend lathe. It comes with a, a three-jaw chuck, four-jaw chuck, face plate. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, a good coat of paint might be able to fix that up. There it is there, you've even got a steady rest. That's looking good. Here's some more details of it. It's got a, a six foot bed. And uh, if you look here, I actually had, was able to uh, finalize it and got it for $600. That's not bad. I also got that bridge port for uh, $1,150. That's a story for another day. Um, only one problem. After I, after I um, got the uh, completion, it kind of dawned on me. I mean, I knew it before, but kind of, you know, you get caught up in the thing. Uh, this sale was in Connecticut, and I live in Tennessee. So I had to drive up and go get it. So I rented this 6x12 utility trailer from U-Haul. It's got a 3,700 pound capacity limit, which I had calculated I thought would work. Um, also got this pickup to go with it and headed off up to uh, Connecticut. So I live in the Knoxville area and uh, the auction was in New Milford, Connecticut which the maps here says about 12 hours of driving. I think it would end up being more like 14 with stops and food and, and traffic and all that. Um, long drive, but I made it okay. Everything's safe and sound. Now, before I left, I had made arrangements with the rigger that was listed um, with the auction company, and they had told me it would be about $400 to get the equipment and load it up onto my um, trailer. Uh, headed up there, um, had a family member, he recommended that I check the tire uh, temperature. And so I used one of those laser uh, thermometers and the right rear tire was running about 20 degrees hotter than the other ones, but I didn't really know what to do with it. So it just kept going. Um, got up there uh, earlier than I had planned. And there was uh, a guy that was there, actually had a business next door, had a forklift and he um, graciously helped me um, get loaded up. And so I contacted the rigging company and they're like, oh, we've been trying to get a hold of you. We were going to have to uh, back out because we had something else come up. So I was like, oh my goodness, I'm glad this guy helped me out. I gave him a couple hundred bucks for uh, his time. He was happy to get it. And I headed uh, back south to uh, Tennessee. All right, I'm up here in New Milford, Connecticut. It's a nine by 36 Bridgeport. And let me show you how I got it strapped down. All right, so for each of these heavy pieces of machinery. I don't want it going forwards. I don't want it going backwards. I don't want it moving to the left and I don't want it moving to the right. 
So I have put down a strap addressing each of those directions. Each one of these straps is rated at 3,000 pounds. That chain, I just had brought it and I just looped it over the top. It's not tight, so I'm not sure that that's gonna do much more than be a stopgap measure. So just, I'm not gonna go through each strap, but I do have a strap for each of the different directions that I don't want it moving. So go slow and go down the road a little bit and then I'll stop and make sure all our straps are still tight. The trip back was mostly uneventful. I did stop and check the uh, straps. Everything seemed to be tight. Uh, I did that multiple times. Uh, suddenly I was going down the road and someone came up and started pointing for me to get over to the side of the road and I pulled over and sure enough that tire had blown. U-Haul handled the situation quite well. Uh, they have an app that you report a problem to. Uh, there was a wrecker there within 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, quickly changed out the tire and got me back going on my way. We made it. All the straps held well. There was no shifting. Excellent, excellent. Well, I was happy to be home. Good Lord must have been looking after me and not have any problems with that flat tire. Um, he even found a little spider that hitchhiked uh, down the way. All right, guys, that's all for today. I'm going to try to keep these relatively short and uh, do updates as I go along. You're going to want to check in on the next one, however. Um, I really get myself in a mess trying to get that down into my shop. Hang on.